Ron DeSantis' high-profile feud against Disney hasn't worked out like he thought it would. He thought this was going to help launch his presidential campaign, which is now in disarray. So he's essentially asked Disney, let's just drop this whole thing, let's move on. Disney's answer is a filing of an answer to the complaint with nine new counterclaims. My name is Dina Sayagdal with the Midas Touch Network. Let's break this down. Now, as you know, this has to do with the Reedy Creek District in Florida. Disney had kind of a special status that was established back in the 60s. Now, what upended all this? Disney had the audacity to speak out and speak out in a way that disfavored Governor DeSantis. They essentially spoke out in support of the LGBTQ community. And Ron DeSantis was so upset about this that he went about trying to take away their legal rights as a corporation. Now, one of the best pieces of evidence that Disney has in their lawsuit are the words of Ron DeSantis himself. He lays out in his memoir exactly how he plans on punishing Disney for speaking out. And he goes on interviews talking about how he plans to punish Disney for speaking out. This is one of the strongest pieces of evidence that Disney has in their lawsuit, alleging that Ron DeSantis is violating their First Amendment rights, among other things. So let's look at this memoir. As we know, most presidential candidates write books as their way of kind of introducing themselves to the world. It's part of the kind of modern day campaign. It gets their message out there. So Ron DeSantis decides to brag about what he did to Disney, how Disney dared to speak out against this bill and how he really took back and fought them. He brags about this in the memoir, not realizing or maybe not caring or who knows having, I mean, who knows? I don't know what goes on in his mind, but evidently he's not thinking about liability in any way, shape or form, because it is perfect evidence that Disney is now using in the lawsuit. So let's look at what the suit, the, the quotes of the memoirs are just unbelievable. So in his memoir, he describes the attack on Disney with pride, saying, quote, nobody saw it coming. And Disney did not have enough time to put its army of high-powered lobbyists to work to try to derail the bill. That the legislature agreed to take it up would have been unthinkable just a few months before. Disney had clearly crossed a line in its support, right? That's where they've crossed the line, in its support of indoctrinating very young school children with woke gender identity politics. So, you know, in the lawsuits, basically now Ron DeSantis is trying to say that Disney wasn't being singled out, that they just wanted to abolish these kind of districts in general. The perfect evidence against that is his own memoir, where he is saying that they have crossed the line and that this is why he's going after Disney. He also gives an interview, which is also, you know, perfect evidence for this lawsuit. He gives a June 6 interview where he talks about Disney participating in this public debate. He says, quote, I thought it was a mistake for Disney to get involved. And I told them, you shouldn't get involved. It's not going to work out well for you. End quote. Governor DeSantis said that he believed it was his role, quote, as a leader, end quote, to, quote, make sure people understand that Disney does not run the state of Florida, quote, adding that, quote, we're not going to have our leadership subcontracted out to a corporation with close ties to the Chinese Communist Party, and that's based in Burbank, California. Wow, a whole bunch to unpack there. But he's essentially, you know, he he's targeting Disney. He's not even trying to make that hidden. 
right? In all of his public statements, in the interview, and in his memoir, he here's another part of his mem- mem- memoir. He describes the attack on Disney with pride, and 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 he doesn't even hide it, right? He's not even really trying to hide it, and. And this is kind of the the irony of it all, is that he did he did all that because he thought his supporters were going to rally around him. They he thought that, oh great, I'm going after this, you know, liberal woke company and I'm going to get, you know, a stronger base. That obviously hasn't panned out for him. He's not going up in the polls. He trails far behind Trump. It's not working out for him. What has happened instead is that Disney outmaneuvered him, right? First, he tried to kind of abolish the district altogether, found he couldn't because it would raise taxes. So instead, they passed a law and he was able to replace the oversight board with his own appointees. But before the new appointees went in, the outgoing board entered into agreements that were favorable to Disney and essentially protected their rights uh, without them in public, right? And we've ta- I talked about this in prior videos. DeSantis never even followed up had anybody observe this board doing that. So that's, okay, so that's the story, right? So that happened. And Disney was supposed to build a billion dollar office complex. This was the plan. They were gonna move 2,000 employees from California to Florida and to this building complex. And in fact, you know, Disney at first didn't speak out about this Do Say Gay bill, but the employees that were going to be transferred were really upset about what was happening in Florida and encouraged Disney to speak out. So Disney then decides to speak out. DeSantis then decides to target Disney by changing the law and taking away their rights. And this lawsuit ensues. So Disney then cancels the transfer of those 2,000 employees to Florida, losing jobs for Florida in the process, and this billion dollar investment in this office complex. That's not a good look for somebody who's running for president, right? So that has already happened. And then you have these lawsuits, and in May, the the legislature passed another bill trying to say that the agreements that the outgoing board entered into should be abolished. And so that's why we have this current uh, lawsuit, right? So we have a few different lawsuits relating to all these different actions. And so they, they didn't stop, right? They didn't stop after the outgoing board kind of tried to protect Disney's rights. The legislature passed another bill. This was 1604, trying to undo the outgoing board's actions. And in response, Disney is following this counterclaim. Shockingly, or definitely unshockingly, they are not trusting, you know, I, you know, if I was advising them, I would not tell them to trust. Disney or Ron DeSantis saying, oh, don't worry about it. Let's just walk away from this. At this point, first of all, why would you trust anything Ron DeSantis says? Second of all, he has really targeted them and gone after them in multiple legislative actions. I think Disney has to continue to protect themselves, and they are. So let's read a little bit from the current counterclaim there one of the things is the takings clause and they're saying here that the district's legislative declaration and enforcement of senate bill 1604 that's the bill that was just passed in may trying to undo the outgoing board's agreements take disney's property without providing just compensation in violation of the takings clause of the Florida Constitution, Article 10, Section 6A, the takings clause provides no private property shall be taken except for a public purpose and with full compensation, therefore, paid to each owner. The issue here is that it's not a public purpose. This is just Ron DeSantis is trying to run for president, trying to make a name of for himself off the back of a feud with Disney. That's essentially what was happening here. He was trying to make a name for himself off the back of a feud with Disney. It backfires when you do that to one of the largest corporations in the world. They're not going to take lightly when you 
uh, try to restrict their free speech, never mind interfere with their valid contracts. Um, another claim is their due process clause violation. Again, the district's legislative declaration and Senate Bill 1604 abrogate the contracts without any rational basis and for only impermissible reasons in violation of the due process clause of the Florida Constitution, Article 1, Section 9. The due process clause provides no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Because the right to make contracts is both a liberty and property right and with and is within the protection of the guarantees against the taking of liberty or property without due process of law, the state is prohibited from imposing any arbitrary or unreasonable restraint on the freedom of contract. Restraint on the right to contract thus can be justified only by exceptional circumstances. So the district cannot make that showing here. The legislative declaration purporting to abrogate the contracts was not enacted for any non-arbitrary or reasonable state interest, nor was Senate Bill 1604. They were instead enacted to further an official state campaign of retaliation against Disney for expressing a viewpoint that Governor DeSantis and his legislative allies disagree with. And that is really the the crux of it is Again, DeSantis, in his own words, makes it so easy for Disney to be able to prove that. Uh, again, let's talk about in the complaint, they're, all they have to do is quote him. Really, all they have to do is they quote him in his memoir, in the Washington Post article, in his interview. It is all just too good how his own words reveal how illegal, really, his conduct was. So his, his memoir entitled The Courage to be Free, Florida's Blueprint for America's Revival. And again, in he wrote a Wall Street Journal opinion right around the same time, kind of a conjunction with the release of the book. And he's, according, I'll read from the complaint, he's criticizing what he called left-wing activists working at Disney's headquarters in Burbank. Governor DeSantis focused on Disney's opposition to Florida House's Bill 1557, that's the Don't Say Gay Bill, and said, quote, when corporations try to use their economic power to advance a woke agenda, they become political and not not merely economic actors. In such an environment, reflexively deferring to big business effectively surrenders the political battlefield to the militant left. Leaders must stand up and fight back when big corporations make the mistake, as Disney did, of using their economic might to advance a political agenda. We are making Florida the state where the economy flourishes because we are the state where woke goes to die. Again, he thought this was going to be wonderful for him to do this high profile fight with Disney to get him all this attention. And instead, he just lost 2000 jobs, a billion dollars of investment, gave Disney all of this evidence of showing how much this was targeted. Again, they have to show this was targeted to Disney and he shows over and over again. And even in there in his words where he's talking about how they're becoming political instead of economic. Guess what? They can be political. There's such a, corporations have the right to political speech. You know, even corporate money, as we know, is a protected form of speech. You know, this we know this, and DeSantis should know this that corporations have the right to free speech, uh, just like any person does. They have a right to become political actors that doesn't take away their right to speech, their right to be able to enter into contracts, their right to be able to run their business. They can do, they don't have to agree with whoever is in charge in the governor's office in order to be able to have free speech and freely conduct their business. And just so, you know, these words are going to just haunt him haunt him if this ends up going to trial. It will be exhibit A, exhibit 
B and exhibit C. All they need is his own words. And that is why he is now asking Disney to drop it because this doesn't serve him well, losing so publicly and so bigly big against Disney will not help his campaign. He's basically felt like he he got what he got what he wanted out of it. This isn't going as I he hoped, and so let's just walk away. And let's just like Really? You really think that's going to work against a company like Disney after all you've put them through and after the fact that they have stockholders that they have to answer to? They have to protect their rights for those stockholders. This isn't a game. It's not a political game. This is business with jobs on the line, um, shareholder interest on the line. They're not going to stop just because you have maybe gotten your fill out of it and maybe it hasn't gone well. For you. My name is Dina Sayag Dahl again. Uh, thanks for watching. Follow me on Ask Dina Dahl across social media platforms and on the Midas Touch Network. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram at Midas Touch to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.